Good evening and welcome to the August 1st, 2012 meeting of the Murfreesboro, uh, City of Murfreesboro Planning Commission. I'd like to welcome everybody tonight to tonight's meeting. The first order on the business tonight <coughs> is the determina uh, determination of a quorum. We do have a quorum present, so we'll move on to the next item, which is to approve the minutes of the June 20th, 2012 Planning Commission meeting. Are there any corrections or additions to that uh, minutes, to those minutes? If not, I'll declare them approved as submitted. We have three items on the consent agenda tonight. Briefly, they are the Family Worship Center, lots one and two, the final plat of 28.47 acres zone commercial fringe and RS-15, located south of Franklin Road, Highway 96, along Veterans Parkway. Family Worship Center is the developer. General Mills security improvements for the site improvements on and a 4,830-square-foot security building on 124.7 acres zone heavy industrial located at 200 Butler Drive, General Mills Operation Developer. And finally, the mandatory referral for a drainage easement located at 3012 Buford Street. John Bolden is the applicant. Are there any members of the Planning Commission, anybody on the staff, or anybody in tonight's audience that would like any of these items removed from the consent agenda for further discussion? Hearing nobody, I'll ask for a motion. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. The motion carries. Just one point of clarification here before we start in on the public hearings. We actually had two different agendas passed out tonight. We apologize for that. Uh, the correct agenda will have item 5A as the annexation request for approximately 47 acres along South Rutherford Boulevard, Mary Murphy Family Partnership as the applicant. And we'll move on with that. Ms. Ely? Thank you, Chairman Lamb and Planning Commission members. Our first public hearing this evening is to consider annexing property that's located along the northern side of South Rutherford Boulevard. If we go to the map, you'll see that it's the property that's colored orange on the screen before you. This property is a 47-acre portion of a larger tract of land that's totaled 90 acres. The request is to only annex the 47 acres of property. The um, Additional study area that's included in this annexation is a portion of the CSX right-of-way, which um, you may have a lot of trouble seeing the purple color along the western property line there. But um, this, the, if you annex this property, you'll need to also annex that additional portion of CSX railroad right-of-way, which is approximately 1,770 linear feet of right-of-way. Also, there's a portion of South Rutherford Boulevard right-of-way to the south that's shaded blue. You could probably see that just a little easier. And that, property, that portion of right-of-way would also need to be annexed if you do decide to annex this 47 acres, and that's approximately 1,393 linear feet of South Rutherford Boulevard right-of-way. This property is located north of South Rutherford Boulevard, and that, I say newly reconstructed, but I suppose it's been several years since the bridge has been added to go over the railroad and the street. It's been reconstructed. The property is contiguous with the CSX Railroad along its western property line, and it's contiguous with city limits along the northern property line. Saratoga Park, which is a developed single-family subdivision in the city, is to the north east of the property, and you can see Forest Point Drive is part of that subdivision. And the properties that are to the east that are shaded in white are in the unincorporated area of Rutherford County. This property, the annexation of this property was requested by the property owners. They have an opportunity to have a future development on the property, and that will be probably be the subject of the next public hearing, which will be the zoning change for this property. There's been an opportunity for a... Um, an industry to move in, which could also receive some of the State of Tennessee Fast Track grant money for that new industry. So this um, this public hearing tonight, Planning Commission is holding, and then City Council will hold a public hearing for the same matter tomorrow evening. So anybody who's interested in here present tonight can also know that City Council will have that public hearing tomorrow evening. I have included in your agenda materials a plan of services for this property that outlines what services the city can provide and gives a time frame for which we can provide those services. Um, this property will be relatively easy to annex. The services are all available to the property. It is contiguous with current city limits and it is also within our urban growth boundary. So staff would recommend that um, or uh, to let you know that this would be an easy annexation to if you decided to, to annex. Your recommendation will be forwarded to City Council for their public hearing tomorrow. You should conduct a public hearing before formulating your recommend recommendation. If you have any questions about the annexation, either before or after the public hearing, I'd be glad to answer them for you. 
Okay. Uh, folks that came in late, there are a few seats up front if you'd like to come up here. It's kind of like church. you got to get here early. <laughs> there are some seats up here if you'd like to sit. Okay, is there a presentation from the developer? Uh, Mr. Matt Taylor here is representing the applicant, but he has informed me Mr. Brick Murphy is also here. They, um, neither of them have prepared a presentation, but they would be gl glad to answer any questions or address any comments that you may have or you may wish them to address. Okay. Mr. Mr. Taylor, anything? Mr. Murphy? Okay. Before I open the public hearing, we'll have three public hearings this evening. All of them will be conducted by the same rules. We'll open the public hearing, at which time we'll invite anybody to come forward that would like to speak either for or against the proposal. Please make all your questions or comments to the Planning Commission itself and not to members of the audience or to the applicant. Uh, any questions that you might have pertaining to the proposal, the staff will make a note of those questions, and at the conclusion of the public hearing, we'll do our best to answer those questions for you. We will. We have quite a few people here tonight, so a lot of people will want to speak. So we will strictly be observing the three-minute time limit. So try to make your comments succinct and uh, observe the time limit as much as possible. All that being said, uh, and when you come forward, please state your name and give your address if you would. So in this first public hearing, I'll open it at this time. Ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak either for or against the proposal. Anybody at all? In which case, I'll close the public hearing. Discussion by members of the Planning Commission. Mr. Lamb, I see there are no residential units on this property whatsoever. It's strictly industrial, commercial. Yes, sir. Move for approval. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed. The motion carries. Moving on to the second public hearing tonight, it's a zoning request for approximately 47 acres along South Rutherford Boulevard, the same track we just talked about, to be zoned heavy industrial simultaneous with annexation. Mary Murphy Family Partnership is the applicant. Ms. Ely. Thank you again, Chairman Land Planning Commission members. Our second public hearing is regarding the property that you just recommended, the city annex. It is 47 acres located along the north side of South Rutherford Boulevard and also along the western side of CSX Railroad. The property is currently zoned for industrial purposes in Rutherford County. The properties to the north are zoned multifamily residential district, single family residential district, highway commercial district, properties that are contiguous to, with this property to the west are zoned light industrial district, the properties that are contiguous with this property to the south are zoned heavy industrial district heavy industrial district. Our zoning ordinance says that when property is zoned for industrial purposes in the county, once it's annexed, it will be zoned light industrial, it will have an interim zoning of LI or light industrial district. The potential user of this site um, has requested that the, you consider zoning it rather than LI, um, you zone it HI, heavy industrial district, the heavy industrial district simultaneous with its annexation so the application that's before you tonight is for the property that you just annexed 47 acres to be zoned HI heavy industrial district simultaneous with annexation and if you have any questions I'll be glad to answer them after or before the public hearing um, in either case you should conduct a public hearing before formulating your recommendation okay. anybody representing the developer have anything to say on this one not again okay any questions from members of the Planning Commission? One question, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Ms. Ely, does this have access to the railroad, a potential spur? I, um, yes, it does. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I'll open the public hearing and ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Good evening. I'm Brian Johns of 503 Forest Point Drive. I'm the president and representing the Forest Point Homeowners Association. Um, there's concern from the residents and uh, several members of the board that are also here that uh, that the property being zoned heavy industrial is going to impact our neighborhood and the surrounding neighborhoods. Sound, noise, um, possible pollution going into uh, Lytle Creek, which runs uh, oh, it's gone. Uh, Lytle Creek, which runs back behind all of this property, also. And uh, the area was just recently um, turned into a wetland, and we're a little bit concerned about, you know, pollution getting into it. And if it is in, in turned into heavy industry, I mean, 
uh, probably the biggest problem is the letter that was sent out that described heavy indu in industrial. And it talks, starts talking about uh, um, uh, steel mills and things of that nature. And, of course, nobody wants a steel mill in their backyard. So, I mean, we'd like to have a little more information about what's actually going to be put there. And if it is zone heavy industri industrial, is there anything going to be done to prevent uh, pollution of Lytle Creek and noise pollution to the surrounding areas, any type of berms or or trees or anything to be put up to prevent this coming in. We're already, some, so, some of the members <clears throat> in the association, uh, you know, my tech is on the other side of Rutherford and they can already hear uh, noise and, and whatnot not coming from that industry. So it, it's a concern for the homeowners association, our property values and, uh, and noise pollution and the pollution into Lytle Creek. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? <clears throat> Nobody? Okay, so I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Adlock, can you address the uh, questions the gentleman had? Yes, sir. He wants to know about pollution in Lotto Creek and noise pollution. Well, number one, we take uh, water uh, quality very seriously in this community. And during the future uh, site plan review stage, we're going to be looking at a uh, stormwater uh, treatment plan, which we do on all developments now. And we are going to endeavor to make sure that the uh, design will keep the uh, uh, polluted waters from getting into uh, Lotto Creek. Um, we are cognizant that Lotto Creek goes into our water, our reservoir that we drink out of, so we don't want that. Uh, number two, a noise. Uh, let, let me make a, a different, another point first. The property is zoned industrial in Rutherford County, and basically heavy industrial today. And if they were not needing water from the city of Murfreesboro and sewer from the city of Murfreesboro, they could develop uh, and would be basically heavy industrial now. Uh, part of what they want to do is to make sure that their economic development use can go in there. And you're familiar with the use. It's called Metal Max. They're over there off of uh, South Church Street now, and they're going to be looking to upgrade their operation. And they won't be smelting any metal, but they may be uh, shaping metal which is and bending metal that will be uh, brought in. So I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of noise, but there will be truck traffic that will be part of their operation. Um, there will be landscaping required, and there's also the Lytle Creek itself and the floodway along it. They're not going to be cutting down any of the trees in the floodway. They want to keep those as part of the barrier between them and Forest Point. So I think that's going to be a very effective buffer between the two of you. Probably they'll let that uh, naturalize quite a bit in the future as uh, time passes. It'll probably grow up some more. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the Planning Commission? No questions. We're ready for a motion. Chairman Lamb, I move for approval. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. That moves us on to our third and final public hearing of the evening. That would be the master plan amendment for the Murfreesboro Municipal Airport for the proposed 2012 airport layout plan, the ALP. Murfreesboro Airport Commission is the applicant. Mr. Adelot. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a uh, public hearing to consider a master plan. Master plans are a little bit different than matters of annexation and rezoning. Uh, one of the differences is that the uh, plan commission has authority and they take action and then it is forwarded to the city council for them to have a public hearing and to also adopt. Uh, unlike a rezoning, which you uh, make a recommendation about, or a uh, annexation, which you make a recommendation. In this case, you will take action, and then the city council will also be requested to uh, take action. Uh, also, one of the differences is the matter of notification. We are required to advertise 30 days in advance of the public hearing, which we have done for this meeting, which we failed to do back in February, which is why we're having this meeting. So uh, what we're doing tonight is we're really doing, a, in, in some respects, a do-over. We failed to meet our notification requirements, uh, which is 30 days in advance of the public hearing in February. So tonight we're going to um, uh, hear another presentation from Mr. Uh, Gerke, and he's going to describe the airport layout plan. Basically what the airport layout plan is, uh, before he makes his presentation, he's going to be more detailed, but it's a basically the master plan, the guiding plan for how the airport will be using the property uh, and, and uh, arranging the various uses within it and, and how we can expect it to grow over the, ne the next planning period. Uh, these uh, airport layout plans are done periodically. They're required uh, in order for us to be able to receive monies from the state and federal government. 
Uh, also, it's just good planning for us to, to have a plan on how we're going to use this very valuable resource of the city. Uh, the airport layout plan is included with your agenda materials. It's been posted on our uh, website so that people could see it if they wanted to. It's been available in my office for people to review, and we've had some people come in to, to look it over. Uh, Mr. Gerke is going to talk a little bit more about the, what's included in the plan, but it is more than just the, the extension of the runway. Uh, I want to stress that. The airport layout plan is more than just an extension of the uh, runway. Uh, it's a, a plan for the whole airport. So with that, Mr. Chad Gerke, our airport manager, is going to make a, a little bit more presentation about the, uh, what's proposed in the ALP, airport layout plan. Thank you, Joseph, and thank you, Mr. Lamb, and uh, members of the Planning Commission for letting us come again before the Planning Commission. Uh, the purpose of an airport layout plan, as Joseph uh, indicated, is the uh, FAA grant assurances require that airports update their airport layout plan every five to ten years. Uh, the update is for safety and design standards, review of the current and future needs of the community and airport customers. It is a document projected of the ultimate improvements to the airport. Uh, the City of Murfreesboro has updated their airport layout plan several times since the airport was developed on the north side of the city over 60 years ago. It is also important to note that uh, the airport, not only does it serve this community, but is, is part of what is called the NIPIAS, the National uh, Plan of Integrated Airport Systems. So uh, uh, often we work with the Tennessee Aeronautics Division, who has a system of over 77 airports in the state of Tennessee, and then that also connects us nationally as, a, as an integrated network of airports across the country. In 2008, the Airport Commission approached the City Administration and City Council and asked for permission to go for, out for a request for qualifications and hire consultants to develop plans to address various areas of concern. The scope of that work included a study of the runway protection zones, runway length, terminal area, and sufficient area for future MTSU uh, aerospace facilities. Now, uh, once we had that permission, there was a great deal of preparation that went into this plan. The overall goal was to present to the City Planning Commission, the City Council, and the community an airport layout plan that, one, showed a realistic development plan to meet the needs of the community now and in the future and continues to improve safety. Two, incorporate restrictions, modifications to address community concerns, and three, a plan that was coordinated with the Tennessee Aeronautics Division and Federal Aviation Administration, ensuring that the plan met all federal and state safety and design requirements. The airport has been serving the city, as I said, for over 60 years. The Airport Commission has been diligent in staying informed of all federal and state aviation issues, as well as taking note over the time of local community issues. Knowing the possible difficulties and length of time coordination with the Tennessee Aeronautics Division and Federal Aviation Administration can take, it was imperative that the local issues be in integrated with the plan from the beginning and incorporated throughout the process whenever possible. The Airport Commission formed a study group which included the city engineer and city planning director to assist them through the planning process. I'd also like to note that uh, three out of our seven airport commissioners live within the pattern of the airport. And even one of our members of our consulting team has been a longtime uh, resident of Murfreesboro. The consultants were informed of community concerns and issues and requested that the issues be addressed in the beginning and throughout the airport layout planning process. Successfully, we also successfully negotiated with the Tennessee Aeronautics Division for additional meetings beyond the standard amount to the state and local, for state and local coordination efforts. So the issues and concerns led to modifications. The modifications include no change to the runway weight bearing capability. This addresses concern of larger or heavier aircraft. Recently, we just took core samples of our runway as we began the engineering for our overlay project. Just to put things in perspective, a medical center parkway has nine and a half inches of asphalt. Uh, our residential development in, in Murfreesboro here has three and a half to four inches of asphalt. Our runway has four inches, four and a quarter inches of asphalt. Very light duty, and uh, I brought you a uh, a uh, picture of, uh, if you can show it on the screen, 
of, uh, of that core sample, and you can see it's about four, four and a quarter, four and a half inches thick. We wanted to maximize the range uh, of the new approach light guidance system. This addresses the concern regarding low-flying aircraft on approach to airport, making their altitude higher over the community. This does, uh, we did sacrifice longer stopping distance and no re relocation of the north run-up area. This is addresses neighbors' concerns over noise. I'd like to show you what all that means for the pilots and for the neighborhood. This is a uh, picture of the existing airport as it is today. And uh, what I'm talking about basically is on this north end here. There's a little bubble at the end of this taxiway, and that, ta that, uh, that little bubble right here is called a run-up area. As a pilot goes out, they have to do several checks of the aircraft. And one of the last checks before takeoff is to run up the engine, uh, make sure that the engine is performing properly and perform several checks. That little run-up can last several minutes, and it does uh, create some noise there. Uh, the next thing that happens is after they've performed their checks and they're cleared to uh, take off, they go to the end of the runway. Our runway is short, so some of the multi-engine aircraft will stop uh, set their brakes, run up the engine to get maximum power, let go, and then proceed down the runway. That does take several minutes and they're at maximum power. Now we take a look at the future of the plan, the airport layout plan, and I want to show you the differences and kind of the procedure that will happen. You will notice that this little bubble is not duplicated again on the north end of the extension of this runway. We kept that bubble there, the run-up area, in its current location so as not to move it any further out uh, closer to homes off of Alexander. So the airplanes will still do their run-up in their current location. Now when the pilot does gets done with their run-up area, they can taxi on and now because they have a little bit longer runway to go with, they can just go down the runway and accelerate at normal pace without having to do a run engine run up. This is an improvement. Now, the other thing I talked to you about was the uh, guidance system, the lighting guidance system. The guiding, the light system guides the pilots in and shows them where, where to land, kind of in a touchdown area on the runway. Now, in most cases, you land right beyond the numbers. In this case, we're, we've worked with the FAA, we've asked our engineers to go a step further. This is usually in the design of the runway, but we've asked them to see what they could do now. In this case, they're extending it to the max that the FAA will allow. And instead of having the aircraft come 20 feet over the end of the runway, we're willing to bring it to it so it's 40 feet over the runway, which means over the community, it's going to be much higher until it comes over airport property. This also means that the aircraft will be landing much further down the runway. Right now, with that plan in, in place, instead of landing way down here towards the end of the runway, they'll be landing where I show this red mark, which is actually only 362 feet from the current end of the runway, giving up around 700 and 40 feet of the uh, of new runway here. We do give up some distance of stopping distance, but that is a uh, it's still a gain for us there. We do not pursue improving non-precision approach procedures, uh, which would address regarding air traffic and low-flying aircraft. So we didn't do any improvements there. We eliminated one proposed row of 10 to 11 units of T hangers addressing concerns regarding drainage. As you know, the airport by nature and by development is a uh, runoff area for a lot of the neighborhoods around the north end of Murfreesboro. And uh, we didn't want to uh, encroach on anything there. Um, some of that drainage has helped, but some of that drainage is a hindrance to, to development. No consideration to develop the east side of the airport at this time. The uh, trees have been declared a, a, a great berm. I know that when we have development, we have a certain class of, develop, of, of berm that we say how thick it is. I'm not sure what classification several hundred feet of berm and several thousand feet of length of berm would be, but I, it's, it's pretty thick. We also changed our night aircraft engine run-up area. When I showed you the engine run-up area at the end of the taxiway, 
We have changed that so at night, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., the aircraft are now uh, running up closer into the center point of the field, and that has seemed to make a difference. There are a few modifications were made uh, in the beginning and throughout the airport layout planning process. Our first, that, that all led to then our first special joint meeting on December 16, 2010, with the City Council and the Planning Commission and Airport Commission to present and discuss proposed runway alternative of 1,102 feet extensions to the north, estimated costs and schedules. Following the special joint meeting, the City Council approved the state and local agreement and contract with our consultants to perform an environmental assessment on the proposed runway extension of 1,102 feet. The airport layout plan was successfully coordinated with the uh, Tennessee Aeronautics Division and Federal Aviation Administration. Hansen conducted the environmental assessment uh, with assistance from Griggs and Maloney. After a four-year planning process and coordination with the state and federal agencies, the airport layout plan is now ready for consideration for city adoption. The Airport Commission believes strongly that after initiating modifications, restrictions to the airport layout plan, after developing several airport runway alternative plans, and after conducting multiple meetings and additional studies over the last four years, that this plan does represent the best balance of future development and preservation. The beginning part of this uh, study all does hinge on the purpose and need study, which looks at your aircraft fleet mix and the determination of recommended runway length. Our current airport is a B2 category airport. It is the smallest and slowest approach speed of aircraft category. As you can see, B, it goes through A to E, anywhere from 91 knots to 166 knots and above. And our design group is uh, B2 there, so our aircraft are typically uh, have a wingspan of 49 feet to 78 feet. The uh, Smyrna Airport, just as an example, is a D4, quite large capacity. This, this category is very important to the development of an airport because if you change that category, you change the separation between the runway and taxiway and make uh, tremendous uh, size changes to the runway protection zone. This proposed ALP does not do any of that. Our fleet mix, as you can see from this graph, is very heavy in the single engine small aircraft. In uh, 2008, we had 52,000 total operations. About 48,000 were from single engine. The multi-engine was 3,248. Our turboprop and jet, we do have them, is about 0.8% and 0.4%. Now we look at the forecasted aircraft operations with the runway uh, before and with the runway extension <coughs> in place. As you can see, in 2008, we had about 52,000 uh, annual operations. And in five years, we forecasted around 54,783, and that is with the runway extension in place. That's 5% growth over five years, or just 1% growth over each year. The max takeoff weight of the aircraft is also important and figured in with the, uh, the appropriate length of your runway. The aircraft that we uh, uh, noticed most in our fleet mix was King Air, the MU-2 and Jetstream uh, 31, and then with the jets or turbojet, the Citation 525, the Citation 560 Lear jets. And uh, you can see their maximum takeoff weights. And note that the maximum takeoff weight of the majority of the aircraft now and in the future are less than 15,000 pounds. The current runway has a published single wheel weight limit of 30,000 pounds. And even with, in the future, this next summer, when we have to do the overlay, uh, we will not be changing the published uh, weight limit with that, uh, with that project. That is just to clear up the uh, degrading asphalt that has been there for 30 years. The future airfield pavement overlay project is not designed to improve the weight bearing capability. Applying the data gathered by the Murphy's, by, uh, about Murfreesboro to the formulas provided by the FAA, uh, the end result showed that the Jetstream 31 replaces the King Air 200 as the critical aircraft that we designed the airport around. And I've shown you a picture of the uh, Jetstream 31, which is a turboprop aircraft, and it's very similar to the King Air 200 
its seating capacity uh, changes from 10 or 12 uh, passengers to 19. Given that there are over 500 operations of B-2 category aircraft, B-2 is still the appropriate category for our airport. With the formulas applied from the FAA circular and including the insurance requirements, the appropriate runway length for Murfreesboro was determined to be 5,000 feet. For the larger aircraft identified in the purpose and needs study, the 5,000 foot runway meets the performance and operational needs. For the other smaller aircraft, this is an improvement to safety. So changes to the aircraft pattern with the proposed extension to the runway. With one runway, there are two approaches and two departures, and I'll go over each. The approach to the north, landing runway 36, uh, even with the runway extension, there are no changes. Departure to the north, runway 36, even with proposed runway extension, you can see no changes. The south approach to runway 18. If you notice on this picture, I've, I've uh, extended the runway out to approximately the 5,000 foot area. And the light blue line represents the uh, direction that the aircraft will be flying and also extending the center line out several thousand feet beyond there. That is currently over undeveloped property. Uh, probably the closest neighbor on that is State Farm. I have talked to their operational people. They have reviewed the plans. They had no problems with, with the uh, uh, proposed airport layout plan. If you take a really close look, that picture was from our city GIS. And you can, uh, if you zoom in real close, you can see one plane, a little, uh, one of our trainers there over the uh, acres of trees there. And I think that puts it in a pretty good perspective there of that north end. Um, it's, it's our best approach uh, to the airport with uh, areas of property that hasn't been developed over those 60 years. I have a picture here that goes a little bit further out and shows that uh, the, the north part of Murfreesboro. And in this area, I wanted to point out that uh, the traffic usually comes in alongside the runway on downwind and comes around. And as they cross, as they, they are a beam the end of the runway, they pull back their engines on the piston engine aircraft. They pull it back to idle. So they are very quiet. Basically, what you're hearing is the wind through the propeller and the wind over the wings and the fuselage of the aircraft as it comes around to finally landing at the airport. At, uh, at the point that they're pulling back their throttle, they're at pattern altitude, which is uh, 1,000 feet over any area, any populated area. And at that point, then they start to, to uh, decrease in altitude. So we listened to the concerns, and I told you uh, from the neighbors, and I, I demonstrated for you uh, how the positioning of the navigational lights is going to change where the aircraft touched down at. At the bottom of this picture is a picture of that lighting system that helped guide the pilots to the runway. And it's a matter of, of lighting that tells the pilots if they're too high or too low or right on target. We've given some drawings here to demonstrate and uh, show on the runway and the different approaches to a standard approach to the proposed. And uh, with that, we also have shown you the uh, distance, the maximum stopping distance for each of those different positions of that lighting. At 40 feet threshold crossing, like I showed you, we do give up uh, we do have 4,260 feet of runway remaining for stoppage. If we look at the 40-foot threshold height, if, you, if the aircraft is crossing uh, DeJarnet Boulevard, they're crossing at about 100 feet. That's only 39 feet lower than our standard approach at this time. Crossing over Osborne, it's again about 39 feet. They'd be at 307. and the proposed, they'd be at about 268. Our taxiway in that picture is about 40 feet width. So if you have an, an idea of what 39 feet looks like. For the departure to the south using the runway 18, it, uh, the extension, there is an improvement to the aircraft. Well, they will be higher as they depart over the airport property and over the city where most of the population <coughs> is. 
So the changes to the, de to the approaches and departures include improvements to departure runway 18, no change to departure runway 36, no change to arrivals runway 36, and change of about 39 feet to runway 18. Changes in aircraft size and sound levels associated with the proposed runway extension. The current list of aircraft that we see at Murfreesboro will not change. The list, as I went over previously, will still be the, the aircraft that will be coming in in the future. There is a picture of them. These are the typical larger aircraft that operate at Murfreesboro. There are no changes to forecasted for the future except for more use of the Jetstream 31 in place of the King Air 200. Murfreesboro will not see larger turboprop or jets than what we have already seen because of runway weight bearing capability would not allow heavier or larger aircraft to operate here. The airport's runway weight bearing capabilities are listed in the airport facility directory that pilots reference for information about each airport. And as I said, even with the overlay, that will not change. We will not see Boeing 737s or any large uh, corporate aircraft or commercial aircraft like that. It is the pilot's responsibility to determine if the airport is suitable for the aircraft that they are, that they are flying into. This information, again, is available in the airport facility directory. And it is the community's responsibility to provide an airport that will best serve the demands and needs of the community. The assumption that has been made is that larger means louder. A concern that we have heard in the community is that the runway extension will allow larger aircraft to come into Murfreesboro, and those aircraft will be louder and will have a negative impact on the community. Larger or just because the aircraft is turboprop or jet does not always equal louder. A study using FAA noise data was presented by the Oxford Airport in the United Kingdom, which dealt with the same assumption. From the slides, the popular misconception is that all jets are noisier than turboprop, which are noisier than the piston aircraft. And that is incorrect. The most popular training aircraft, a Piper PA-28, is twice as noisy as the quietest business jet, Cessna Citation, according to the FAA. The world's most popular aircraft, a Cessna 172, is noisier on takeoff than most of the popular jets. Most of those are jets that come into Murfreesboro. When you look at the range of sound levels as provided by the FAA and AOPA, the uh, aircraft are at 65 dB and jet at 75 dB, surrounded by conversational speech at 60 dB and an average street traffic at 85 dB. If you look at DeJarnet Boulevard, according to the, to the state traffic count, there's roughly on an average annual uh, traffic count, there's around 13,070 cars that travel down to Jarnet each day. 2% of those, roughly in the industry, 2% is usually heavy trucks. And you can see from that traffic, uh, our traffic count is about 71 a day. So uh, a majority of noise in that area is going to be from traffic and not from aircraft. There's not an anticipated change in aircraft fleet mix at Murfreesboro. The current and forecasted number of overall operations and jet aircraft operations are well below the FAA's threshold to qualify for any additional action or studies. Changes to the airport overlay district, or the Part 77 surfaces. With the proposed runway extent to the north, the protected airport overlay district also extends. This is the uh, uh, surrounding uh, space around the airport that goes through most of the city uh, that protects the navigation of aircraft in and out of our airport. In this drawing, you can see that the black line represents the current location of the Part 77 surfaces of the airport overlay district. And the red line represents the future overlay. It's, a, it's an addition of about 622 acres. Now, most of the properties under that are uh, already under very restrictive residential or industrial commercial height restrictions, 35 to 75 feet. The airport overlay district has a height restriction in the area of 250 to 350 feet, depending on the specific location, which uh, would, you could put in quite the cell tower. Financing the projects and economic impact studies. The Airport Commission conducted two economic studies. The first study requested was an economic impact study of the runway extension itself. The second study was to come from a similar community which has extended its runway and the community <coughs> documented what the impact of the runway extension was on property values. The economic impact study for the extension of the runway was not a problem to have completed. 
There was a problem finding an economic study on a runway extension for a general aviation airport. Economic studies are not usually required or funded for general aviation airports. If one existed, it was highly unlikely that it could adequately represent Murfreesboro or its airport. Not all airports or communities are the same. The Airport Commission hired R.A. Wiedemann and Associates to conduct the studies and report specific information about Murfreesboro, its airport, and the runway extension. I'd like to report, too, that R.A. Wiedemann and Associates worked independently from our other consultants. They dealt directly with the airport. An important factor both for the economic study and when addressing the concerns of our neighbors is the fact that the airport is self-supportive. The airport budget is generated from the revenues gained from aviation fuel sales and hangar rents. The Murfreesboro Airport is one of only three or four general aviation airports in Tennessee that operate this way. No local tax dollars. It is also important to note that the primary financial partner in this study uh, in the uh, airport layout plan and, and environmental study is the Tennessee Aeronautics Division, another entity that uses funds from taxes on aviation fuel to help maintain and improve our state's system of airports. The proposed projects have no impact on city tax rate as the airport pays for its operations and capital improvements. While the airport plays an important role in the community, it uses its own revenues to support itself. I'm going to switch now to the uh, actual information from the economic study and uh, give you the rundown on the, uh, the specifics on it. The economic definitions, and uh, throughout this report, there are certain uh, key items in the economic study that, that should be described first. Direct spending. It includes on-airport spending on employment, operations, and capital projects. It also includes off-airport spending by air travelers for rental cars, hotels, restaurants, incorporated, et cetera. Those direct spending is associated with both the providers and the users of airport services. That's direct spending. Induced benefits are the impacts from the original direct spending created by the success, successive rounds of spending in the local economy until the original direct impact has been incrementally exported from the local area. It's gone. Jobs and income. Quantify the income of generated by aviation, the number of jobs supported by the airport. The total output in dollars is the combined impacts of both the direct and induced spending. And our taxes are the taxes that are collected through all that spending to our local uh, government agencies. The airport was developed in 52. It covers 225 acres, around 132 based aircraft, 52,900 operations in 2010, home to six on-site businesses. And Rutherford County, as we know, is, is uh, uh, one of the fastest growing counties in Tennessee and is the 30th fastest growing county in the U.S. So the existing airport economic impact of direct spending is around $5 million. Induced spending is around $4 million. Total impact, almost $9 million. Total jobs at the airport, 72. Income, again, around $4 million, and it, and it uh, benefits the tax. Local taxes paid around $235,000 each year. Based on additional per year spending over the next 10 years, if we were to do the various projects one at a time over the next 10 years, the additional annual direct spending for the airport would be almost $2 million. Average annual induced spending, around 847. Additional annual impact, $2 million. Total additional jobs is around 24 each year. Additional average annual income, over $875,000. Additional yearly state and local taxes paid, around $66,000. If we isolate just the runway extension, we have a direct spending, basically the cost of the runway extension at $2,680,000, induced spending $1,270,800, a total impact of almost $4 million, total jobs 24, income 1313600 and estate and local taxes paid around 99000 the other question that came in was about the property values. This is where we had Randall uh, Wiedemann look exact, uh, 
particularly just at Murfreesboro. He looked at home listing prices were analyzed. The study area was five mile radius from the airport and data divided into sections based on geographic distance from the airport. On this graph, you can see that the closer you were to the airport, the higher the average price was. And the further out you got, the lower the price was. The highest average home price in the study area was $336,000 within one mile radius of the airport. The lowest average home price in the study area was $161,000 in the, in the four to five mile range. There was, as they declared, no evidence that MBT, the airport, negatively influences property values. We took it a step further with, uh, with Atkins, our, our existing engineers, and we took a look at the mean, or the median, I'm sorry, and we uh, broke it down again. Now there is a slight change in the zero to one mile and the two to three mile. But if you look at the trend, it still represents the same as what we found with the average. I have shown you here both the average and the median side by side, and then the trends. And you can see both the average and the median represent about the same return. The area within a mile of the airport is not the concentric ring with the highest median home price, whereas it was in the area of the highest home prices in the comparison of average prices. Comparing median prices, the one mile range from the airport still has a substantial higher home price than the next ring one to two miles out from the airport. As with the comparison of averages, the comparison of median prices shows that the outer rings have prices that are substantially less than that of the core area around the airport. Comparing the average and median trend lines, the generalized trend of the data still shows that the home prices near the airport are generally higher than the prices one finds as one gets further away. So the summary of findings from Randall Wiedemann was that the runway extension will have a one-time economic impact around 18 months of 24 jobs. Incomes totaling 1.3 million, total output of 3.95 million, total state and local tax impact of around $98,000. And there was no evidence found that the airport negatively influences the property values. The airport commission respectfully requests the adoption of the proposed airport layout plan. From the beginning and throughout this planning process, the Airport Commission has done its very best to balance the demands and needs of the community, the state and federal safety designs and standards, and integrate modifications and solutions to the plan to address the issues and concerns raised by neighbors of our airport. The proposed $2.6 million runway extension will be 95% funded now by the Tennessee Aeronautics Division thanks to a change in policy, which will leave us responsible for about 5% or $134,000 coming from the airport. No local tax dollars will be used to pay for this project. The Murfreesboro Airport Commission is confident that you'll find that the proposed airport layout plan is a plan that is consistent with the airport's history of service to the community. The airport layout plan and supporting documents show us how the airport can continue to effectively serve the entire community to the future as it has over the last 60 years and still be a good neighbor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gerke. Any questions from members of the Planning Commission or from the staff of Mr. Gerke? Mr. Gerke, I'm sure you'll stick around until after the public hearing in case we need to bring you back up for I'll be uh, here. <laughs> to answer some concerns. Thank you very much. Any uh, statements or questions before we open the public hearing? If not, I'll open the public hearing at this time, ask anybody to come forward to the microphone. Please state your name, give your address, keep your comments to no more than three minutes, please. I'm Charlie Myatt, and I live at uh, 1306 Mulberry Court. My wife and I moved there almost 15 years ago. Of course, the airport was there. Uh, if I had had concerns about it at that time, I wouldn't have moved there to begin with. Uh, I've heard comments and we addressed it just a minute ago, that the airport extension would lower my property value. I believe that if the airport had any negative impact, that would have occurred when I bought it in 1997. I suspect that it didn't, and I felt good when they said the new report would not. So I don't think the airport extension will negatively impact me economically. Uh, I trust and believe in our airport commission and the consultants they've hired. 
that this will make the airport safer. And as one who lives close by with a lot of other folks, and I'm sure a lot of them in this room, I'd like for it to be safer. So I speak in favor of this, and uh, I encourage you to uh, do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mott. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I live at 802 Bradford Place. Thank you for the opportunity to speak again. Um, first, I'd like to say I really appreciate Mr. Gerke. He's represented the community well. He's been available uh, to answer questions and has been very uh, generous with his time. I must say the same thing for the Planning Commission, Margaret Ann, Mr. Adelot. I greatly appreciate everything that you all do for this community. I appreciate uh, the hard work and the efforts that you put into uh, ensuring that Murfreesboro is a good place to live. And I know that it's not an easy task, especially when you have to put up with people like me. But um, that said, I would like to say that it is difficult to stand before you tonight. Uh, normally, I would be encouraged to take this opportunity to voice my concerns in accordance with our democratic governmental process. But I'm a little bit disheartened um, because you've already decided your vote at least once. Uh, I won't belabor the point. Uh, I've yet to hear anyone who opposes MTSU, its flight program, safety for pilots, uh, or a better Murfreesboro. I've not spoken to anyone who's made those points. We believe that a viable alternatives were intentionally kept off the table to suit the wants of a few. Uh, you know the reasons we oppose the runway, increased air traffic, larger planes, noise, safety, pollution, quality of life, unnecessary, unnecessary expenditure, and uh, a poorly presented business case. Um, the economic study by Wiedemann and Associates was a farce. Anyone with a basic understanding of elementary math can poke holes all through it. I do not speak on behalf of my company, but as an analyst for a financial institution, a large regional financial institution, I found it laughable. The data was by no means uh, normalized. Uh, 61 homes uh, and within a one-mile radius were listed, and these were list prices, uh, not sales prices, by the way. However, if we look at U.S. Census data and compare data available through the post office, we can determine that approximately 55,000 people live within two miles of the runway. That's a significant amount of people, uh, nearly half or, or at least half of Murfreesboro's residents. Um, I feel there's been a lack of full disclosure from the airport representatives and consultants. Uh, you also have a copy of nearly 300 signatures collected from a petition asking that you not approve the runway. Not everyone, obviously not everyone could be here tonight. Um, of some of the people I've spoken to have said, well, what's the point? Because the vote has already occurred. Um, <clears throat> there have been a number of statements which, when, um, which, when not given uh, full consideration, uh, are quite misleading. Uh, first, we're told that the critical aircraft wouldn't change. Uh, that was published in the paper back in 2010. And now we hear about the Jetstream 31, for which, if I understand correctly, and I'm sure someone here can tell me, did production on that plane stop in 1993 after 386 were manufactured? I, I don't believe that would bring MTSU's flight school into the 21st century. Um, we've heard from the airport and uh, MTSU about the necessity of lengthening the runway. We heard how the pilot feels when he takes off from Murfreesboro in the airport and the King Air 200, uh, a plane who, whose manufacturer specs don't require 4,000 feet at maximum takeoff weight. This calls into question the, the hyper-sensationalized Mother's Day blood donor flight returning from Pennsylvania. Uh, what do the manufacturer specifications say the length of the runway should be in wet weather for this aircraft? I don't believe that it even hits 3,898 feet uh, based on some cursory uh, research on the Internet. Um, did the pilot, while he's a hero for his actions of delivering the much-needed blood, overshoot the runway through error? Um, another statement that's been made that an insignificant amount of Flight operations occur at night. Well, let's take 10% of their numbers. Uh, that's 5,200 flights. Finally, um, a couple other things I'd like to make real quick, if I may. Uh, one of the biggest arguments presented by the airport was the terminal is the terminal is the doorway to Murfreesboro, and they can't even turn on a coffee pot. Yet their capital improvement project list, uh, terminal renovations fall near the bottom in prioritization, even after nearly doubling the number of hangars. Why do we need to significantly increase hangar space if there's no projected increase in air traffic? Three minutes isn't enough to go through everything that I have to say, and it's not enough to dispute a lot of the statements that were made tonight, which could easily be done with the economic data especially. Um, however, I ask you to reconsider your votes and vote to not allow the airport uh, layout plan to be approved. Thank, Thank you, sir.
Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Ben Tankard. I live at 2271 Alexander Boulevard, uh, right behind the airport. In the big house, that's the biggest house in the neighborhood. <laughs> people, people, people make me feel bad about the house, but I've been big all my life. So, <laughs> um, I am a, a pilot and also uh, own two aircraft. I'm also a recording artist and. Um, my schedule sends me all over the country. I'm, I'm blessed uh, to, to be successful as a gospel jazz recording artist. And I'm also a pastor of the Destiny Center Church. This is like a prayer meeting tonight. Um, but I do over 150 concerts a year. And I, it requires that I use private aviation to do it in order to get back to be in place to serve as the pastor of Destiny Center on Sundays. American and Continental just do not agree with my schedule. And so uh, traveling over 150 times a year, I'm in a different airport two or three times a week. And um, I love Murfreesboro. I left the NBA because of an injury. And I came to Nashville and lived in uh, Brentwood for a while. And uh, those people are just we're just so snooty over there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I started using Murfreesboro Airport because the fuel was cheaper and uh, people were just so much more nicer. And so the airport was my uh, <laughs> avenue to Murfreesboro. And when I got coming over to Murfreesboro every week to get on my plane, I fell in love with the city and the people and I moved here. And I found out that I should have been here, uh, Murfreesboro has um, just great people and they're just um, so, you know, happy and go lucky, almost like Mayberry. <laughs> and uh, I'm in 150 different places a week, I mean a year, and um, I tell you, it's cities I go into are not nearly the size of Murfreesboro and not nearly as progressive as Murfreesboro and the people are not nearly as nice and sweet as Murfreesboro. But they all have a runway that's over 4,000, 5,000 feet. And so um, I'm just appealing from the standpoint of somebody that's seen 1,500 airports and 1,500 cities in my last 20 years career as a recording artist. Uh, Murfreesboro deserves this runway extension just like we deserve colored television. Now, I, I, I like black and white movies. I like Andy Griffith. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to watch it on a color TV. And so I just uh, wish you guys could extend this runway because these people mm -hmm. and this community deserves to be moving ahead, and a longer runway would be just one step toward cable TV. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. My name's Ed Whitman. I live at 2905 Madison Avenue. My house is zero degrees from runway uh, three six or I mean one eight so I'm due north and I'm taking you know on the takeoff from uh, you know going north out of the um, out of the airport my background is I do aviation electronics avionics I have opened up my first avionics shop in 1978 I've worked and ran avionics shops all the way from Jacksonville Florida to Opelika Airport and Tamiami Airport in Southwest Miami. Uh, I have a couple concerns. One is, um, <clears throat> no matter how you think the run-up uh, location on the runway is going to be, you're always going to have the hot dog pilot, which everybody in aviation is very arrogant. And so what's going to end up happening is they're going to come out to the end of the runway, and they're going to blast off no matter what. They'll put full power and then start rolling. So that there is a little bit concerning. The other thing is, is I haven't heard that much thrust reverse on any of the King Airs or any of the turboprops. Uh, a couple times on some of the jets, but not on any of the prop airplanes. So that's telling me that the runway is not too short. Okay. The other thing is, I know my neighborhood is concerned about the altitude coming over our houses. Uh, having a reduction of, what, 49 feet? is going to be a little bit more of a concern because normal training practices on new pilots 
is cutting the power on landing. And we've had that many a times. And I sit out in my backyard and I enjoy it because I know what they're doing. But when you're now 49 feet closer to the ground, that's a little bit more precarious. On the VATSI light system, which is the light landing system, uh, normal is three and a half degrees. I need to know what our degree is on our VATSI light system. It can go up to four and a half, but that has a notum that they have to put for pilots a notification. Uh, home prices, we bought the uh, house that we're in with a small airport. You start ex extending the runway, especially in my neighborhood, the prices are going to go down. I pay 250 for my house right now. I can't even sell it for 210 because of the way the economy has gone. So you add up the runway a little bit longer, and we're going to have more of that happening. <clears throat> as far as flight training, you have Smyrna. If they want to do heavier aircraft, bigger aircraft, if they want to do anything other than that, then they need to go to Smyrna. They have a great air base up there. And they have a lot more runways, and they have a lot more of a uh, ILS system, instrument landing system. So I can see the benefit of putting a longer runway, but the benefit of spending the money to extend the runway, I don't think is worth it. I think keeping it at what it's at, maybe improving the taxiways, improving the hangars, improving the FBO would be okay. But I never think that, that MTSU is really going to get into the big boy stuff with their flight training. MTSU is a great school, but their ranking in aviation is not the best. If they want to have the best, you go to Embry-Riddle, even Spartan, you know, Spartan School of Aeronautics or Spartan College of Aeronautics. You go someplace else that has a good rating. But MTSU is okay, but it's just a training school. You know, I don't know any way to put it other than that. So thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Ron Ferrara, and I'm the chair of the Aerospace Department at MTSU. And I would like to uh, correct uh, a misstatement I just heard. MTSU's ranking in aviation is among the top four or five schools in the nation any way you want to measure it. So I am a little bit disappointed that a statement like that would be made. I've listened to all the, uh, all the arguments and understand the, the most emotional involvement and the, some misstatement of facts that have been made on probably on both sides. However, MTSU Aerospace is not intending to buy bigger airplanes. We're not intending to train in 737s. We can do that in simulators, which we do now. We do jet simulator training. We do turboprop training. What we are interested in, in one word, is safety. I'm the chair of the aerospace department, and I don't want to be the person that has to call a mother and father and say, your son or daughter has been in an incident and is hurt or worse. Unfortunately, I've had to, had, to, had to do that in the past, not here, but in other places. I don't want to do it again. An extension of the runway will increase safety for our use. We are a training institution, not just a little tiny training institution. We work cooperatively with schools like Embry-Riddle, North Dakota, Purdue. Um, but we are not going to be operating 737s out of Murfreesboro. We're operating Diamond DA-40s primarily, small four-place piston engine airplanes. Again, an extension of the runway will increase safety. These are kids we're training. Yes, they make mistakes. Yes, they make errors. I don't want to have to pick them up in the grass field past the end of the runway. So I urge you to vote yes for the runway extension. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Farr. Hi. Uh, my name is Matt Clark. I live at 1842 Lexington Trace. Uh, unlike some people, not the big house, but the small house beside the, uh, the fence. And um, I'll be a school teacher in the fall, 
Um, I don't go traveling around 100 days a, a year, but I do live there 365 <laughs> days a year. And um, this kind of just seems like the 1% against the 99%. I've, I don't know where he got his stats from, but my house is worth $100,000. It's not 300000 or I don't know. Um, I live right beside it in the zero to one mile. And um, I don't know. I just, I, all my neighbors are displeased. Uh, the other day there were these huge uh, white aircraft with these big propellers that were shaking my house. There was three of them. I think it was Monday. Or, and I don't know. I've never actually seen those before. It was just the first day. With, but, I mean, it was so loud it was literally shaking my house. And um, I heard a lot of people complain about that. Um, but, and I suggest for the safety reasons, if you are scared about picking people out of a field, just go to Smyrna. It's like 15 miles away, you know. And people drive that far to, to work every day. It's not going to kill anybody to drive that far. Hmm. And it, but it will hurt people, their um, property values, their homes. For somebody like me, I'm never going to be rich as a school teacher, but I, I, do, I will enjoy it. And, you know, $15,000 of my property value is a big deal to me. So, but that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. My name is Jim Gardner. My address is 517 Dallas Court, Murfreesboro. I am the CEO and owner of Murfreesboro Aviation. Um, the large white aircraft that was shaking the windows on Monday was the United States Marine Corps Osprey doing touch and goes uh, in Murfreesboro. They are very loud. Not something that regularly happens here. It was quite an event. But uh, that was an Osprey, uh, United States Marine Corps. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you, listen to the facts. Um, Mr. Gerke, uh, the airport commission, uh, has given you the facts. Everything else is a lot of emotion. Please take emotion out of this and deal with strictly the facts. This is not a runway extension for the elite few. I am not elite, ladies and gentlemen. I am not elite. <clears throat> the, um, the extension will, will be much safer for pilots, instructors of my school, students at my school, instructors for Middle Tennessee State University, the students of Middle Tennessee State University, the passengers that ride in the aircraft that come in here and the non-flying public of Murfreesboro. It will be safer for a lot of people, not the elite few. I'm pretty sure if you ask one of my CFIs or MTSU CFIs if they're an elite few, they're going to say no. I know what they make. <clears throat> not all on, the uh, on, the, on this commission uh, were elected in this last uh, election but there are some that were that promised people things before they knew the facts they promised their constituents before they knew the facts that they would not vote on this so i asked them to those those certain people uh, elected to please listen to the facts before you make your your decision make this for the safety of murfreesboro there are large companies that come into murfreesboro and fly in here on a daily basis that bring business and it will help the small and large businesses and the people in this community. My last thing is that there are two main streets in Murfreesboro. There are two. You have the main street that we all know right outside. There's another main street in Murfreesboro, and the pilots call it 1836. It is a very large main street into this town, and please think of that. I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. Hello, my name is Cindy Cook, and I live at 2720 James Edmund Court. I am not a pilot, but my husband is, and I will say I'm an uneasy flyer at best. I'm not a fan of flying in a small aircraft, but I've learned to feel safer in it than an airliner with certain pilots. <laughs> And I will say, uh, as well, I'm a realtor, not as experienced as uh, Mr. Lamb here, my colleague, but my broker and I, uh, Taylor Wright, who has been a broker for quite a while, discussed this, and we came up with our own little uh, study, and we found basically the same thing. We, we were just curious, I was curious as a realtor, the houses that I've sold over there in that area within a two-mile radius of the airport 
all, all of them without exception, were not pilots, but were interested, you know, like to see the air traffic coming in uh, for their small children or they had many different reasons. And it was a plus for them, not a minus, um, as would be the landfill, for example. As far as safety, uh, as an uneasy flyer, the runway comes up pretty quickly. And I've seen how a small aircraft in weather and wind and what have you, uh, water, all those factors that in a car are dangerous, are much more dangerous in an airplane. And the students at MTSU, I've met a lot of them, they're wonderful kids, and they're very conscientious, most pilots are. But they need that extra space, and I want them to have it because I'm in the pattern as well. Uh, bought my house for that reason, that's how I sold it, made that sale to my husband. But I would like uh, people to consider that safety is always a plus and save your energy for Walmart that would be the big detraction from your property taxes. <laughs> Thank you Ms. Cook. Anybody else? Uh, my name is Phil Lubert. I live at 2710 Howell Drive. That's north of the airport, just a little short of Osborne Lane. Uh, I'd like to make two points. One is I live in the area called the Hamptons. And our experience there, when I talk to my neighbors, uh, generally their complaint about the airport is that there's lots of low-flying flying planes coming right in over our roof. So it's, it's pretty obvious that the FAA regulations in terms of following the flight plan, of going in over that big empty field all the way to Osborne, that doesn't happen very often. Usually the planes veer off over our roofs, and when they're landing, they come in very low and very often are probably in violation of FAA regulations. The problem that we have and why... I think the airport, uh, people here in favor of the airport, if, if you want to know why you've lost favor with the people who live around there, it's because we see these regular violations of flight. And there is no enforcement. There's no way we can enforce this. If we call up the FAA, what they want is they want the number off that plane, they want video of it, they want eyewitnesses in order for them to even address it. So that means that all the traffic at that airport now is completely unregulated. It's simply up to the pilot's own discretion whether they're going to follow rules or not. So that's a big concern of us, and that's a really a big reason why the airport has lost a lot of uh, goodwill from the neighborhoods around it. And that's the, really the issue. If you expand this airport in any way, if you do anything to continue to allow this traffic to increase, then there's just going to be more of that. I think the point was made at the last meeting that the analogy here really isn't to Main Street. It's to a highway. It's to a public highway. The city's not going to have any control over who uses that airport when they want to use it. So you're basically opening up a large interstate for anybody to come in and use it any time. The only difference is there's not going to be any traffic cops. And all the data about what height they're going to be flying in, at what point they're going to be landing on the runway, nobody's going to enforce that. There's not going to be any reason that anybody's going to follow that. So that's why we're dubious. And that's why we're, I think, as large, I talked to all my neighbors in the Hamptons, we don't like this idea. We're opposed to it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Hello, my name is Bob Ballard. 202 Kathy Lane. I'm a commercial pilot of 36 years, and I've been using the Murfreesboro Airport ever since it was out in the country, and I had a full head of hair. You know, I was asked to attend this meeting over 20 years ago by then Mayor Joe Jackson. You see, this runway extension battle has been fought many times over 30 years ago, over the last 30 years. Mayor Jackson asked me back then to attend this meeting and support our city 
when a new runway extension project was going to be proposed. Mayor Jackson, Superman, believe you not to be around when the, the next time this came about, believe the extension of the runway was good for the entire city. As an MTSU airspace undergraduate at the time, I supported Mayor Jackson's efforts to support what is good for everyone in Murfreesboro. Unfortunately, back then, just as today, you have a handful of homeowners that changed the future of our city. These homeowners distorted the truth, they misled the public, and what's worse, they scared unknowing homeowners into believing that any extension to our runway, the city's runway, will devaluate property, which you've heard that today, increase noise, you've heard that tonight, and decrease safety. Facts are, property values have gone up. I can remember when it was a swamp around the airport. You couldn't buy it for $500 an acre, you could. So obviously that has changed. Airport no no noise levels have not increased. The Gallatin Sumner County Regional Airport, the Sparta Upper Cumberland Regional Airport, both have had runway extensions, both have had traffic decreases, and no increases in noise have been reported. Safety is always the first priority, which can be enhanced with better facilities. Safety is enhanced, could and will be enhanced with a longer runway just as street lighting and seat belts to cars have been done for years. I mean, it's about as long as I can remember. So please do not let history repeat itself. Do not let a handful of individuals keep denying a thriving and caring city from reaching its potential. A longer runway will only benefit all the citizens, all the citizens of Murfreesboro, economically, in usefulness and safety. Mayor Jackson, my fellow aviators, airport users, and myself, and a growing city, ask this planning commission to vote yay in support of this runway project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. I'm Marcy Castleberry. I live at 714 Judson Close. My main concern is frequency of flights. Um, my understanding is that one of the biggest reasons for wanting this extension is that the airplanes that are at the larger end of the category that is now accepted on this, air, in, to this airport cannot fly in and out. Their insurance will not allow them to fly in and out on a, air, on a runway that is shorter than 5,000 feet. So that's a large part of the reason they want this is so that some more planes can come in because now their insurance will allow them to fly in and out of this airport. Right now, their runway is too short. They can't come in and out. Absolutely, this runway extension will increase frequency of flights. I, I make the analogy of my neighbors every few days mow their lawn, and, and it would be silly for me to be upset about that. That's a normal thing. You know, if I'm outside, it's loud. It's, it's aggravating. But I know they don't, you know, they're going to do it every now and then. If my neighbors decided to mow their lawns all day, day and night, it would be time to move. And, you know, I know that I'm, I'm in the place where I am, it is aggravating. I'm a gardener. We have a nice screened-in porch. We enjoy being outside. Some planes that go over are not a problem at all. As you guys know, some planes are very loud. And I understand that bigger does not mean louder. I'm not, I understand that. But when, when you've got increased frequency of that sort of thing, day and night affecting sleep, you know, um, affecting enjoyment of your home. That absolutely affects quality of life. And I don't plan on moving from my home. Quality of life is enough for me, but it, but it will affect real estate price. I asked one of Mr. Gerke's associates after one of these meetings, uh, what is the percent utilization of our runway right now? In other words, how much is it used compared to how much it could be used, you know, with time and things. He said about 20%. It's about 20% right now. What that means is you could be, have five times the amount of traffic, okay? And this wasn't in any of their reports. And I understand that they've got some, you know, estimates about how many more flights are going to come in and out. I have a hard time believing those numbers. I mean, I, I, you know, I can't, I don't have anything to base that on except that this is a hugely growing community. We know there's going to be more flights. And, of course, they only looked a few years out. They don't know what will happen, you know, so many years out. So, so right now we're at 20% utilization. We could go up five times, and with the, the things that, you know, 
how it affects our quality of life, I think that's significant. I think this airport is in the wrong place, especially for it to potentially be bigger, and I encourage you to vote against this. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Tom Reed. I live at 1634 Wexford Drive, and I'm here on behalf of the Wiser Company that um, has its headquarters here in Murfreesboro. We have four offices uh, in four cities, and we're headquartered here in Murfreesboro, but we have offices in Birmingham, St. Louis, and Reston, Virginia, and we hire employ over 150 people, most of which are here in Murfreesboro. And uh, Si could not be here tonight, and he asked me to come on his behalf and ask you to approve uh, the runway extension for safety reasons. Our company plane uh, is used extensively in our work, and it flies in and out of Murfreesboro at least twice a week on average, sometimes more, of course. And um, we're very concerned about safety. We will not uh, fly in more, or we won't fly in less, but we are interested in making it more safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reed. I'm Tommy Irwin. I live at uh, 1203 Whitworth Cove in uh, uh, Section 7 of the development of Northfield, uh, <clears throat> Northwoods West. Uh, first time I spoke, I'm not prepared for this. I've just listened to a lot of stuff tonight that supposedly is facts. I'm sure some of it's facts. <clears throat> I think it was well put together in a very positive way to promote the extension of the runway. Uh, I will say right up front, I am totally against it, 100%. Unequivocally, totally against it. Uh, when I bought my home a little over eight years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, I was told by my developer that uh, this was a small airport. It was a very small amount of traffic in and out. It was mostly used for uh, flight training for the MTSU, which I had no problem with that. Small, small aircraft, single engine aircraft, I had no problem with. Didn't expect a lot of noise pollution. And, and to, truthfully, the, all I want to address, I, I'm totally in favor of safety. Uh, I don't believe all the things that I've heard tonight about increasing safety by increasing the runway. I just don't, I don't believe it. Uh, my main concern is the noise. Uh, I live there. I'm at home many weekends, and I heard somebody else mention tonight that the noise that comes from just the lawns being cut is, is serious enough. But, and, and when the first year or two that I lived here, the aircraft was not that noisy. It was not that not that frequent. Uh, the smaller planes were not that bad. The, in the in the eight years I've been there, the planes have gotten louder not necessarily larger. I know the twin engine uh, uh, prop planes are, are more noisy than the single engine small planes. A statement I heard about uh, the, uh, the uh, prop jet at 75 decibels, I do know, I am an engineer, I know what 75 decibels is compared to 65 decibels, and believe me, 10 decibels from 65 to 75 is a lot. 85 decibels on a truck, on the Jarnet, doesn't bother but a very small few people that live right on the Jordan. It doesn't bother the whole neighborhood like we're right behind the airport. You put 75 decibels on a jet driven up on that, on that runway, it's going to affect a lot of people. And the number one thing that's going to affect with me is the value of my house. I don't care what anybody says, the property value of my home is going to drop. I hate the noise on the weekends especially. I hate the noise during the afternoons when I come home, try to relax from a, a very n stiff nine-hour day at work. And I can't get on my, my patio and enjoy the quietness of the afternoon because of the air traffic. I do believe, as this lady said a while ago, that the air traffic is going to increase in frequency because of this, and we will have no control over what comes in and out. So 
I ask you for us, the people that live in that, in that area with very expensive homes that pay a lot of taxes, to vote no to turn this thing down. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Irwin. Hello, I'm Steve Jones. I live at 707 Judson Close, and I've heard everyone's uh, argument for safety. But here's one thing that we have to remember. This airport is extremely safe. Mr. Gerke, as the airport manager for uh, many years now, has won award after award for maintaining a safe and, uh, airport. You know, the logic and reason behind extending the rope, uh, runway for safety's sake just does not hold up. We have a very safe airport. Now, when you do extend the runway, as Ms. Castleberry, Dr. Castleberry said, you are going to suddenly show that this uh, runway is on the map for a large number of people who could not otherwise land here. Not only that, one thing they're going to do is they're going to fill up on fuel, which, you know, from an economic standpoint is good. From a safety standpoint is not good, because even though they say the uh, runway extension is going to allow the planes to uh, get in the air quicker and have more uh, buffers, it's, it's not really going to be the case because you're going to be weighted down. You're going to have more weight in the planes, and they're going to have to increase their speed. And no matter what length you put the runway at, you're still going to have a safety factor involved. And pilots will push the envelope. I mean, that's just human nature. You know, thank goodness, Wilbur and Orville Wright were able to push that envelope, and we have uh, flight. But increasing the length of the runway is a capacity issue. According to the FAA order 5139A, not safety. It's not a safety issue. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Jones. My name is Terry Darce. I'm MTSU's chief pilot. And I've listened and I understand your concerns. I want to address the safety issue. Unless you're a pilot, you can't address that. I walk out there and I get on that airplane. I fly to King Air and I put 10 kids on that airplane. And my life is on the line and their Mr. life Darst, is on the line. Mr. Darst, please make your comments to us. I'm sorry. Audience, please. Thank I'm you. sorry. It's just frustrating. I understand. The uh, runway length is a safety concern, and I'm going to tell you why it's a safety concern because of the adding fuel on, I'm not going to carry any more fuel. I pretty much come out of Murfreesboro at gross weight. Uh, that's just the way I have to fly the airplane. A thousand feet at gross weight is an improvement. When I come in to land, I heard somebody say something about that uh, didn't use thrust reversers. I don't have a jet. I have a turboprop, and I go into full reverse when I land that airplane to keep from running off the end of that 4,000 foot runway. Get it wet, I have to go to the very end to keep from running off the runway. There is a safety concern. We are a reasonably large school with quite a number of students. 52,000 operations a year on a GA airport is a lot of flying. There is a safety consideration for this. I live in the airport approach to Nashville. I totally understand the concerns with aircraft flying over, but that's just part of being close to an airport. That you, there's no regulation that any pilot's breaking when they take off or they land because you have to be able to take off from ground level and come back to ground level. There's no pattern that says you've got to go straight out for 2,000 feet. It's whatever the pilot determines is the safe operation for that aircraft. So my biggest concern on that 4,000, not even 4,000 foot runway, 3,800 foot runway, is the safety of landing in the King Air, we're not going to step up to anything bigger. I just don't think that's going to happen in my career there. It's landing for those 18-year-old mother's sons and daughters that are landing on that 3,800-foot runway. It not only needs to be longer, it needs to be twice as wide as it is. But that's not even being talked about.
Thank you. MTSU is in support of this, 100%. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. My name is Jonathan Siegel. I live at 1207 Whitworth Cove, which happens to be just uh, on the other side of Alexander, on the that would be the east side of the airport. Um, I come to you obviously as a homeowner, and as as such, I'm opposed to this because of the increased noise. That's just my point of view. But if you stand back and look, you've got two sides of the issue here from folks that are presenting their cases, two emotional sides, I'll call it. You have the folks who are presenting the side that says this, this is, uh, expansion is needed for safety, and you've got the homeowners who are saying this expansion isn't needed because it's gonna reduce my quality of life. I'd like to present maybe a third side, which is uh, a logical, rational component. Uh, my background is in finance. I worked for 12 years at a Fortune 100 company uh, in finance, I've evaluated many, many capital projects over my career, and the numbers in the case that were presented earlier, um, if you ask me, those are justification for a business case. And from the information that was provided to us tonight, the, the, airport, the airport is very proud that it's self-sustaining. Uh, it doesn't require any tax dollars to function. And if you think about it, the expansion, the money that is going to be spent there has to be justified in one way or the other, which is going to lead to increased revenues for the airport. So I think when you come down to it and you measure the logical versus the emotional, you really need to weigh which more important, the, the, the people who pay taxes or more revenue for the airport. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? My name is James Antitoli. Uh, I live at uh, 715 Middleton Lane in Bradford Place. Um, I'm the president of the Bradford Place uh, Community Association, and I appreciate you uh, you all uh, taking the time to, to listen to our comments. Uh, as Mr. Adelot pointed out, this is basically a do-over. We know the outcome, so I'll keep this brief. Um, I just want to enforce that uh, Bradford Place Community Association is opposed to this, um, to the to the runway expansion uh, extension. Um, we're not opposed to the airport. Uh, we're not opposed to MTSU. Um, <laughs> that would be silly. Uh, uh, but uh, the extension we feel um, would be uh, a detriment to our uh, quality of life and our, our fin financial stability in our neighborhood. Um, this is not our jobs. Uh, unlike uh, the airport, uh, we can't hire um, uh, contract consultants to uh, to uh, represent our perspective on this. Uh, we rely on finding our own uh, research and independent research, uh, mostly, um, as you probably assume, but on the internet. Um, but what we find is uh, that our our data does not support the slanted view of the airport's pro proposal and you wouldn't expect anything less from the airport. Obviously they want to put the best light on their proposal. Um, I believe that I've addressed uh, most of the issues, most of the concerns uh, in Mr. Gerke's proposal on an individual uh, basis to each of you. Uh, so there are far too many to go into in three minutes. Um, I will address one point. Uh, on May 7th of 2002, a 727 passenger liner sized jet landed um, at the Murfreesboro Airport. Um, according to the College, the College Basic and Applied Science newsletter, um, that, that jet used only two thirds of the existing runway. Uh, and I'm sure it was a little bit of bragging by the pilot. Um, he also stated that, uh, that he did not use his brakes uh, landing. Um, I, I, there's always going to be hydroplaning um, there's always going to be uh, pilots that, uh, due to pilot error, plane error, whatever reason, uh, land in the middle of the runway, uh, no matter how long we extend the runway. Uh, so no matter how long it is, there's always going to be accidents. That's just uh, the way it is. What this boils down to is uh, this is a want by the airport and not a need by the greater community. Uh, and in closing, I'll illustrate uh, our concern uh, by uh, telling you about a, a close neighbor in, uh, in my cul-de-sac, actually. Um, 
who uh, recently hastily sold their home uh, on the advice of a close family member that is a former flight instructor who said, uh, get out while you still can sell, sell your home. Uh, and that's what, exactly what they did. And uh, they're no longer a neighbor. Um, I would uh, be more specific, and I can be on an individual basis if you like, uh, but I think it would be unfair to our new uh, members and residents uh, to point out the address before I've had a chance to even give them a welcome package. Um, but in closing, I just want to say thank you for listening to us, and, uh, and please uh, vote against this, the, the airport expansion. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Dawn Jones. I live at 922 Northbrook Court. Um, I'm not used to doing this, so uh, forgive me if I jump all around. <clears throat> I don't want to do anything to hurt MTSU. My daughter goes to MTSU, and one of their flight instructors is my son's lacrosse coach, so I really don't want to make him mad either, but I'm opposed to the um, airport expansion. Um, we like to enjoy our patio. I wish we could have had this meeting on our patio because it would have made Mr. Gerke's Sunshine and Lollipops um, presentation take about three hours because when planes come in and la when they land and take off, you cannot have a conversation on our patio. Um, you, he wouldn't have gotten through it. Um, like the lady over there said, um, more, the planes may not be louder, but there's going to be more coming in. That's going to be more noise. So there will be even less conversating going on on our patio because there's more planes coming in and out. Um, State Farm doesn't care um, about the airport expansion because they don't have a patio that they like to enjoy on Saturday mornings or after dinner in the evenings. They don't sleep there either. Um, I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm sure you can imagine why, and a plane came in and landed at 3 in the morning. That's insane. I don't understand why a plane would land at 3 o'clock in the morning. But we have a bedroom on the upstairs on that end of the house, and our cul-de-sac backs up to the airport. I don't want, you know, the, air the airport to be unsafe, but I can't believe that somebody trying to buy our house, if we were to sell it, walking around the property, looking at the ha outside, the landscaping and whatever, and they can't even talk about what they're seeing, is going to appreciate that and want to buy our home. That means we're going to have to reduce the price to try and sell it, um, unless it's to a pilot. Um, it's going to be very easy for you guys to vote yes, um, because you haven't sat on my patio. And you probably don't live in the neighborhood. I don't know where you guys live. But if you don't live on that street or in that area, you don't understand what we hear day in and day out. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Anybody else? Walmart is open no, wait. No comments from the audience, please. Uh, my name is Paul Mosey. I'm uh, at 2628A Battleground Drive in Murfreesboro. I'm the uh, MTSU chief flight instructor. I'm also her son's lacrosse coach. <laughs> so uh, he's fine. <laughs> Does a good job. Um, I certainly appreciate everybody's concerns on both sides, of course, and, and you obviously know what, what side I'm speaking from. Uh, I do pay taxes, as I have for 18 years in Murfreesboro, so uh, that's one point I wanted to make. I can't possibly determine what the value of my house is going to be this year, next year, or the year after, no matter what happens with the airport. Um, I think that we could probably convince people to understand how good a program we were if we charged a quarter of a million dollars for each student that came through like Embry Riddle does and advertised to the general public that we are the best. After a while, you'll convince people you're the best even if you're not. Um, I have a Marine Corps background. I was a Marine pilot. I was a regional airline captain. I have a little bit of knowledge as far as what is required for safety and what's not. Uh, I can assure you I'm not arrogant enough to stand here and tell you that I'm not confident. Uh, you have to be confident to be a pilot, but you can't be arrogant. And those are the people, and they are out there. I'll acknowledge that. Um, but the program that we have, uh, we train professional pilots. Students come in every year. I sit down with them and I say, we have a pro pilot program. We wanted to call it an amateur pilot program, but parents didn't go for it. So we go, we're professional pilots. We train commercial pilots. You can come in our, our uh, airport, you can come in our building, we have a wall. 
The wall shows all the pilots and their names that have come through MTSU that now fly for FedEx, UPS. Name them. Delta, American, anywhere across the board, all the military services, United, Southwest, anybody. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pilots have come through. All those programs, military on up, they're all standardized programs. They're all highly regulated. And that's what we teach at MTSU. Are we teaching kids? Absolutely we're teaching kids. Do we have to try to mold them? Absolutely we have to mold them, but that's what we do there. Any runway expansion anywhere adds to safety. It does. I have hydroplane before. It's not comfortable. I have almost run off of runways, and I'm talking long runways, 11,000 foot runways, because of conditions. So I can only speak from safety from a pilot's perspective, and again, I certainly understand noise concerns and so on and so forth, and that's all things that we all have to deal with on a different level uh, for, each, for ourselves. But I just want to speak for the, this fact that we are a good program, we do teach safety, we do push safety, can't control every pilot, no, but we do the best we can at MTSU to direct our kids in the right direction, and I would hope that you would consider this uh, runway expansion in the, as far as safety is concerned. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Oh, go ahead. Call me. Okay. My name is Chuck Williams. I'm at 1535 Las Casas. I'm one of the uh, uh, tenants at the airport. Uh, I'm also an airline transport rated pilot. Been flying since the 60s. Uh, flown as a, as a contract pilot for a number of years <clears throat> for uh, two or three major corporations out of Nashville. And <clears throat> in that line, uh, you do fly mostly jets. And uh, to address a couple of things, one of the uh, comments that was made is uh, about airplanes landing at 3 o'clock. One of the corporations I flew for for some time up there was the <clears throat> transplant organization. And when you get a call to go pick up a kidney or a heart or whatever, uh, it could be at 3 o'clock in the morning. And we flew into lots of small airports all over the country in doing that. Back to the jets that most normal corporations fly, uh, when you land at an airport, <clears throat> you use thrust reversers more than you do brakes. Use brakes for taxiing and stuff like this. The thrust reversers basically stop the airplane for you, saves expense on the brakes and wear and tear on the brakes, wear and tear on the tires. If you need to use the brakes, then you use the brakes. Uh, but <clears throat> when a corporate jet takes off, uh, it don't just go out to the air, end of the runway and, and so forth like we do. In our, I own a personal airplane as well, and my checklist on my personal airplane is very short compared to a corporate jet. Uh, Believe me, uh, a professional pilot will uh, figure all of the uh, options he has for every takeoff and every landing. And safety is the primary concern. And <clears throat> as someone said, unless you're a pilot, it's hard for you to determine uh, whether uh, an extension to a runway adds to safety or not. And believe me, it does. If you should happen to blow a tire uh, or anything should happen, uh, you need the extra room. In a uh, corporate jet, <clears throat> these airplanes uh, get painted in a bad uh, point in that uh, they're safe, uh, probably safer than some of these smaller airplanes. If you lose an engine on a corporate jet, you lower the nose and keep on going your climb rate's just not going to be as great as it was. And in many of the uh, areas, as far as jet noise, the, t the uh, fan jet engines we have on those are much quieter than most of the props. And uh, I think the same people that are using the airport now uh, will be using it with the extension, only safer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Good evening. My name is Joe Russell. I'm 560 Osborne Lane. My house is the one with the dotted yellow line across it for the flight approach pattern that everybody does. Especially on Saturday mornings when, uh, you know, when the fly-in, which I love to go over and eat breakfast and have done uh, once or twice. 
I am a graduate of MTSU from uh, 1989, and my roommate, Scott Pritchard, now flies for Continental, or, or used to when I saw him five years ago. So I've been on that runway, uh, I think 58 was the last count, so 58 takeoffs and landings. I'm not a pilot, just flying with him. Um, I like having the airport here. I think it's a vital uh, an asset to the community. Um, however, I'm right in the middle of the interstate for this thing. I mean, it's, you know, they're coming over all the time. And I've heard a lot of concerns about safety here tonight. I think the one thing that everybody's missed the whole time is that where I live, on Osborne Lane, it's a, it's a main drag up to there. There's a lot of cars flying up down the road. Uh, when the biplane comes over, we end up with enough noise that if my kids are out in the driveway, and i got a two-year-old, and Murphy's Law dictates when you can't yell at them, they're going to run for the road. And that's what we have problems with, is I can't get, you know, and we're out there trying to talk to my neighbors and stuff like that, and I have to wait for the planes to clear, and then we get back to where we can carry on the conversation. So I'm not opposed to progress. Um, I think this is a great community. Um, you know, we like, you know, I've, I've always been uh, uh, an industry where I like to take a company, build it up, do great things, see what you can do with it, make lots of money. Um, I think from my concern, if you could find a way to uh, uh, give us some guarantees of some sort that your rating for the airport's not going to change, so that the same type of uh, aircraft is not going to change, that's very important. You know, I, I bought there knowing the airport was there. So I'm responsible for that, and I'm willing to accept that responsibility. Um, but I bought there knowing the type of aircraft that was going in there and the amount of traffic that was there. And I was okay with that when I bought there, not knowing that there would be any expansion plans, you know, six years later. So uh, uh, those are some of my concerns. I think a lot of those have not been addressed tonight. Um, you know, I, safety of my children is, is of, uh, of, of of most important to me. Um, it, and it doesn't happen often, but it has happened often enough that we're aware of the issue. That Because if you've got the jets taking off and heading north, and they do, there's some jets that take off from there, that noise lasts a lot longer and a lot louder than just a simple uh, prop plane going over. So I uh, just wanted to make those points. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Anybody else? I'm uh, Shelby Hunton and live at 1021 East Clark Boulevard. Uh, actually, probably the exact opposite of the gentleman that just spoke uh, under the traffic pattern. And a couple of points. I don't think uh, the airport expansion is going to affect property values whatsoever. Uh, of course, I live on the poor section of the airport, or poor side of town compared to most of these folks, uh, old section. Um, and the noise really doesn't concern us either. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. I'm Ernie Betancourt. I live at uh, 544 Barlow Lane, Las Casas. I didn't come prepared to speak, but I've heard a couple of comments that I just had to address. So I'll quickly run through my uh, credentials here, if you don't mind, just tell you I am a flight instructor. I don't teach commercially. I was a flight instructor in the Air Force in helicopters. I'm still uh, rated by the FAA for helicopters and airplanes. I uh, hate to admit I fly probably one of the loudest airplanes on the airport, uh, the biplane that was just discussed. I don't know of any others out there. <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, th this is an emotional thing for, I think, so, somewhat for the pilots and a lot for the homeowners, and I, and I would love to see a, a little bit of uh, less emotion and, and more practical thing. The credential I really wanted to say is I am also happen to be a CPA, and I heard a couple of people up here talk about their financial credentials and, and kind of uh, take a cheap shot, I thought, at uh, Mr. Gerke's presentation. And I, I will admit that I keep my certificate inactive, but I, but I do have some, uh, I just hated doing all that continuing education stuff. Bad enough, say, keeping my flight instructor rating happy. Um, the, the only point I was going to make is I think Mr. Gerke's presentation is factual. Uh, I have a financial background and a flying background. Frankly, I don't need another 1,000 feet. I get away with about half 
the runway at the airport. Uh, I do try to avoid uh, seriously Osborne Lane, so I'm surprised that anybody over there ever hears me because I, I, I had to go look on the Google Earth to find out where it was when I heard about people flying their patterns that big. However, you know, again, my only comment is I think Mr. Gerke's presentation is factual, and I would hope that you would uh, make your decision based on facts. It is a safety issue. Uh, I soloed my granddaughter there on her 16th birthday, May 20th, and so it's a big deal for me to understand safety and, and flying. Uh, I've been in bigger airports, smaller airports, flown helicopters. I can understand that, Os that uh, Osprey was probably uh, extremely loud. Love to fly one, too, but uh, you probably couldn't afford it. Anyway, my point is, strictly, it is a factual decision. I hope you'll make your decisions that way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davenport. Would anybody else like to speak? Mr. Lamb, I'm Joe Elliott, 310 Bluebell Avenue. Um, we are retired, and uh, I know all these pilots have, have expressed all their credentials, and, and they're very emotional about taking off with those kids on the plane, but I'm emotional when I take my grandkids down the road and on the interstate. Uh, I object to the airport expansion because I think it will bring more, more flights in and out. Uh, Flights uh, pass over our house at about 7 o'clock in the morning, 7.30. We called the airport one time to ask about this, and, and the person hung up on us. They didn't want to talk to us about it. And, and regardless of what we, think, uh, what we say and what's been said here today, because of the location of the airport in Murfreesboro, it is detrimental to, to the people who live near the airport to have it expanded. Now, you can say all you want to about business, but uh, I think it is detrimental. Um, with the airport in Smyrna, which has already been mentioned, I think that could accommodate larger aircraft. And I do not believe that larger, that's, that larger aircraft will, will not be noisier. I believe aircraft will be noisier as they come in, as they leave. And we, like someone mentioned a few moments ago, we're out in the yard. We have to wait till the aircraft goes over. Till, uh, and the, the planes that take off fly right over our house and make their turn right over our house. And uh, we, we have to wait till that, that goes by so we can talk and share. And so I'm, a, I'm opposed to this. Uh, I think it will decrease our property values, regardless of what people say and regardless of what the, what the uh, things have been said here tonight. And I think that we need to be concerned about the people of Murfreesboro as well as the business and, and the, all of the things that go on because actually uh, we do, like someone said, we pay our taxes and we need consideration in, in, in things that are done here in Murfreesboro. And so I would oppose the enlargement of this airport um, because I believe that, that many people will be dissatisfied because of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Miguel Aguirre. I reside at 802 Bradford Place. I am an undergrad at MTSU. I love MTSU, and I'm grateful to give MTSU my money and student loans. However, in regards to these facts, um, it is a fact that we've heard a lot from the uh, pilots and those who are for the airport extension. It is also a fact that, uh, as Dr. Castleberry mentioned, there is noise. We hear the noise. Is it incessant? Okay, not yet. And it is our goal for quality of life to ensure that it is not. There was a decision made, or pardon me, I apologize. During the last city council meeting that was open to the public, uh, Mr. Gerke, I believe you mentioned that there was Northfield, rather Northwoods neighborhood, who did not want a commercial area near them. There was a vote, and the city voted to, con to continue residential neighborhoods throughout. When that decision was made then, I think, let's say it was the Achilles, because now we have neighborhoods and Borough Beach even, which is a multi-million dollar a water park for the children that are, that are parallel, neighborhoods parallel as well as the, uh, 
McKnight Park to this airport. So I think that when that decision was made to keep it residential, the city had made its, its decision to ensure the safety not only of the people but also the quality of life of the community. And so I am opposed to the extension. We do have in Rutherford County, again, an airport in Smyrna. If we do need to have a larger aircraft, regardless of it being for games or whatnot, we can go to Smyrna for that flight. Anything else, we, can, we could continue to train these students who are United Continental uh, FedEx pilots as we've been training them for years here in Murfreesboro. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? My name is Larry Williams. I live at 3579 Sanford Drive. I represent the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association as the Airport Support Network Volunteer for the Murfreesboro Airport. Could I have a show of hands of any AOPA members here? Thank you. The AOPA is a nonprofit organization founded back in 1939 to promote general aviation. It has over 400,000 members and <clears throat> it's the largest aviation organization in the world. I am an aviation safety expert. I started flying out here when I was 17, and that was over 48 years ago. I was a flight instructor. I towed gliders. I uh, worked as a corporate pilot, charter pilot, regional airline captain, an FAA air traffic control specialist, and over 30 years as an aviation safety inspector for the Federal Aviation Administration. I retired in February of 2010, and since then I've been a consultant working with foreign civil aviation authorities, airlines, aviation training organizations, and corporations worldwide, as well as serving as an expert witness in compliance and litigation matters. There's been a lot of misinformation expressed by the opponents of the aircraft of the runway extension. The opposition believes that the runway extension will cause bigger and noisier aircraft to operate in Murfreesboro, contributing to the decrease in property values. The aircraft that operate in Murfreesboro now are the aircraft that will operate in the future with a runway extension. <clears throat> the runway weight-bearing capacity is what limits the size of the aircraft, not the runway length. And larger aircraft do not necessarily mean noisier aircraft. For example, FAA data shows that a Boeing 757 is quieter on takeoff than a Cessna 182. <clears throat> the majority of the citizens of Murfreesboro will benefit because airplanes taking off to the south over downtown Murfreesboro, most densely populated area of our town, will be higher. And the perception of noise is decreased by 50% for every 500 feet in aircraft altitude. The FAA required environmental assessment states, based on the previ previous analysis, the sponsor's proposed action is not anticipated to create any adverse noise impacts. The economic study requested by the Planning Commission found that there's not a significant forecasted increase in aircraft operations because of the proposed runway extension, and therefore there will be no expected impact on local property values. These studies are results of experienced expert consultants. Another allegation by the opposition is the city of Murfreesboro has failed to present a su sufficient case to substantiate expansion. If the runway is extended, the runway, the airport, will be safer. A plan for this extension began back in the late 60s when the city bought the McKnight Farm back in 1970 for recreational purposes and extension of the airport runway. The airport layout plan approved by the FAA in 1972 shows a 1,250-foot runway extension north of the airport on the newly acquired city property. Recreational areas such as McKnight Park and the Sportscom were designed and built outside the airport property and runway safety areas. During the present airport layout 
planning process. The first study conducted was a purpose and need analysis, which is basically a, a traffic study for aircraft. Using that data with the guidelines provided <coughs> by the FAA, the consultants justified and proposed the airport runway extension. Unlike a newly planned development, the city of Murfreesboro has over 60 years' experience of excellent partnership and service from its airport and airport commission. The airport commission has documented that this plan improves safety, meets the needs of the entire community, and is consistent with the level of service that the airport has provided this community for over 60 years. Fifty percent of all aircraft accidents and 60 percent of all student aircraft accidents happen on takeoff or landing. I've investigated hundreds of accidents that were the result of runway excursions. That's a nice way of saying they ran off the runway. And none of those accidents occurred on a runway where the pilot was landing illegally. In other words, the runway was long enough, but for several reasons, either mechanical or human errors, the runway excursion happened. The safest action this city can take to provide for an extra margin of safety and for the future of the airport is to approve this runway extension. Now, insurance policies and company policies sometimes require longer runways than what is needed by regulation and safety. I've audited many, uh, many uh, aviation uh, uh, corporations and aviation uh, companies, and sometimes their policy says we can't land in less than 4,000 feet or 5,000 feet, and there's always an exception because that airplane, usually the airplane owner, wants to land somewhere where the runway is shorter than the policy says. Mr. Williams, I'm going to ask, ask you to wind it up if you would, okay. please. Has it been five minutes? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and one of those exceptions is Hilton Head. The owner wants to play golf at Hilton Head, and the runway is shorter than 5,000 feet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Hello, I'm Kevin Jones. I live at 922 Northbrook Court, and my list of credentials is very short. I'm just a tax-paying resident of Murfreesboro, and I live right next to the runway. Um, how many people here tonight in the audience are neighbors and live close to the runway? All we are asking, we're, we're all for safety. Um, the numbers from the report, I feel, are skewed. Uh, most people can take, do a survey, find facts and figures, and you can prove pretty much either side of any point that you want to prove. Uh, I'll give you that maybe bigger planes are not louder, and maybe bigger planes will not land here. But there will be more planes. Uh, once we release, uh, extend the runway, insurance allows other, other planes to come in, there's nothing we can do about it once we extend it. We can't chop that extra hand off the runway and make it small again. And um, so uh, I, I just want you guys to think about this very seriously. Uh, once we do this, we can't come back. There's no pulling back. We do uh, value our home. Uh, you heard my wife speaking about sitting on our patio. I've tried to conduct business on the patio. We've lived there for two years. The first year, well, when we bought the house, they told us that the, the traffic was very low, not disruptive at all. Uh, we actually spoke to all the neighbors around us. That's what everyone said. We've seen a huge increase in volume and noise just in these last two years. And if you allow this extension to the runway, I hate to see what it's going to be like. Uh, it may not be louder planes, but if you increase the volume or increase the, uh, the number by 25, 30, 40 percent, 
then the noise is going to increase by that much as well. Please think about your decision long and hard before you make it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Okay, anybody else? Last call. Seeing no one come forward, I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Gerke, do you have any final comments or planning commission members? Do you have any questions for Mr. Gerke? Mr. Adelot, do you have any comments? No, sir. Okay. In that case, we'll open up for discussion, discussion or, and or motions from the uh, members of the Planning Commission. Mr. Lamb, excuse me, Mr. Ives pointed out there was one question. I, I, I'm listening real closely, and I'd heard a lot of statements, didn't hear any questions, but I did hear a question about if this, if there is an extension to the um, airport, would the category change? And he seemed to want some assurance. I think that would be the gentleman, Mr. Um, Russell, may have been. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Gerke might be in a position to answer that question. No, as the plan shows, even with the extension, we're still a B-2 category airport based on the type of aircraft that are coming in. And that was a, uh, a very important point as well with the airport commission that we stay the same category as we are today. Well, this is obviously a highly emotional uh, proposal. I think people on both sides that have come tonight have clearly stated their positions on both sides, and it's a very difficult thing uh, for us to do. I don't think anybody in here changed your mind uh, hearing the presentation tonight. If you came in with the, probably one mindset, you probably are leaving with the same mindset, on either pro or con. Unfortunately, those of us sitting up here have to make a decision, and we have to make a decision what we feel is best for the city of Murfreesboro as a whole. Uh, in consideration for that, with the respects for the property owners around the proposed area. So if all that being said, we need to come up with some type of motion one way or the other to move this along for discussion. So I ask the members of the Planning Commission to uh, either discuss it further or let's have a motion. Mr. Lamb? Chairman, I don't think anything I could say would probably change anybody's mind in here. I think both both sides have presented some uh, very good arguments, uh, and I'm going to say I don't know if, if all the facts are together on both sides. Uh, uh, somebody said everything is local and everything is personal in politics and in public service, and, and, I, and it's hard not to believe that's true. Uh, my sister lives on Wellspring Court, and if you know where Wellspring Court is, it backs up to the runway. And she's been there eight years, and she built that house there. And uh, I've had some discussions with her about this, and she said, I knew the airport was there, and I hear the planes, but it doesn't disrupt my life. Now, here again. There's people out there that, that disagree with, with her and would disagree with that statement. But I, I just think in the, in the best interest of the city of Murfreesboro as a whole that, that we need to do this. So, Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the recommendation of the airport authority. Motion's been made. Is there a second? I second that motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion made and second. All in favor indicate the saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five aye. aye votes and one no vote. The motion passes. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody that this will be forwarded on to the City Council. The City Council will also have a public hearing on it, just like this one tonight. 
for you to come once again and express your comments to them. I would urge all of you to do that, and I want to thank all of you for coming tonight. We're going to conclude the meeting briefly, but we have one more item, staff reports and other business. Mr. Adelaide? We have no uh, staff no reports. No staff reports and other business. Once again, thank you very much for coming and participating in this tonight, and have a safe journey home. We are now adjourned.